One of the two most important assessments that a diplomacy player needs to make for success at the human part of this board game is to identify the style of play that their opponents are using. Today, I'll discuss seven different styles of play that I've come across and offer strategic ideas about their relative merits. This is Legendary Tactics. A few years ago, I put out a video about the eight diplomacy archetypes. I'll put the link to that at the end of the video. To really understand your opponents though, you also need to consider their play style. Whereas a diplomacy archetype describes who a player is or what their personality is like, the style of play describes how they play the game, and there's an important distinction between these two. The interaction between the play style and personality yields some very interesting insights if you look for them. We'll move from a more conservative style of play through to the more aggressive approaches in the video, and I'll also give each style of play a name that has both a negative and a positive connotation, depending on whether it's you who's using this approach or whether it's your annoying opponent. I'll rank each style on a defensive versus offensive scale and a likability scale as well. And I'd be interested to hear in the comments which of these styles you use and which of these is the best approach. Our first style, and the one that usually yields very poor results, is the Turtler, or the Fortress. This is the classic player who draws turkey and they're happy with their lot in life. They batten down the hatches, they lock down their fortifications, and they hope to weather the storm. This is a player who's naturally inclined to defense, and they'll predictably order supports on all of their units each turn. They're a player who could take neutral dots, but instead they prefer to let other players battle it out. The Turtler won't make many enemies, and they won't be perceived as a threat. The one upside to this style is that it can sometimes morph into a kingmaker as the game progresses, but it makes for a boring game. Their walls are high, and they're ready for the siege. Defense versus offense, they score a 1. Likeability scale, I put them at a 9. Most people don't mind this player, they can take them or leave them. Styles of play and diplomacy seem to emerge from equal parts personality of the player and the circumstance on the board. The Thrall, or the Vassal, is a player who may not have a lot of confidence in their own play, or they're someone who prefers to see other people take the lead. They'll oblige the needs and the desires of other players over their own needs, and they'll play as a supporter. When two allies attack jointly, the Vassal is the one who doesn't take the new center, while their ally grows. They'll subjugate themselves to the will of their ally. This style can foster a strong relationship with another player, but it can also leave you vulnerable to betrayal. Just be careful not to fall too deeply under your ally's spell. Defense versus offense, they score a 3. Likeability, this player gets an 8. Most people really like them, but those other two points that I didn't give for love is because sometimes they're not respected. Perhaps the most frustrating style of play that I've ever come up against, but one that's very successful in diplomacy, is the Vulture, or the Sniper. This style of play is best suited to someone with a strong defensive position and enough units to have some leverage on the board. They won't put themselves at risk, but rather they'll ask allies to do the heavy lifting, and then they'll ask to stay even on dots by leeching from their allies. This player will slowly work their way outward, never extending beyond their comfort zone, and they'll refuse any kind of gamble. Slow and steady growth without overtly angering their neighbors characterizes this approach. This player is a sponge who silently soaks up the easy pickings when two neighbors get into a conflict. Like a sniper, they sit comfortably on their distant hillock, picking off their unwitting targets. Defense versus offense? 4. Likeability scale? I'm biased because I hate this style of play. They get a 3 in my books probably closer to a five in most people's books because they don't get into too much trouble, but they just sit there passively not doing much and, and that annoys me. If you haven't already joined our channel, please consider stabbing the subscribe button now to help us out. We really appreciate your help. Number four. This style of play is the piggybacker or the patron. This player looks for the board leader and they team up with them. They like their allies strong, but not too strong and they follow the momentum of the game but they also like marriages of convenience. When it suits them, they'll shift their allegiances. Little that you say will ever convince this player to change their playstyle once they've set their course. Most of their decisions come from the board state, and frequently they ride the coattails of their allies' success. Many high-level players use this approach, and it can be extremely effective. They'll also bring smaller players along to help them, and can be generous when they get something in return, whether it be security on a weak flank, or a lesser power attacking an enemy on their flank. This playstyle tends to emerge when a nation gets to six centers or more. The main distinction between this player and the Vulture is that the patron plays a slightly more offensive and generous style. 
Defense versus offense, five. Likeability scale, they get an eight. The fifth style of play is the despot or the boss. This player uses their strong board position to leverage players around them. They can work this implicitly or explicitly, but the message is always the same. Please do this or else. The likability skill can be challenging to identify for this one as well because the style of play can combine with the charismatic people pleaser or the diplomatic archetype. So think of dictatorial leaders who work with a smile on their face. They gather their friends and supporters close to them and they give them whatever they want so long as their followers do what they say. They earn rewards. But cross them and you're in trouble. Defense versus offense, eight. Likeability scale, two. If you have thoughts about the styles that I'm identifying, or if you think I've missed any styles, please add your thoughts in the comments. Ideas from the community really help to develop rich discussion around this amazing game. The sixth play style is what I'll call the Desperado, or the Janissary. This is often not a style that a player consciously chooses, but rather one that they're forced to play in the mid to late game. The Desperado is the player who has few options left and needs to become a Janissary or a special elite unit who's essentially part of a much more dominant neighbor. They live at the mercy of their benefactor, they do what they're told, and they really don't have many options other than to attempt to capture a new dot every year to stay alive. They have nothing to lose, and I've seen this kind of player come back from the brink of annihilation with smart tactical plays and clever press work. Remember, you can never count a player out of this game until they have no centers left. Defense versus offense, they've got a nine. And their likability scale, also a nine. People generally really appreciate and respect someone who clings to life. Number seven, this is our final category. The final style of play that I've noticed in this game is the run and gun, or the Blitzkrieg style. This is perhaps the most interesting, but also wildly unpredictable style of play in Diplomacy, and it's also one of the riskiest approaches. This player pushes hard every turn to capture new territory. They're willing to take risks, push the front, and leave their back lines temporarily exposed while they capture new territory. While I admire the bravery of such an approach, I also don't find myself playing this very often because it seems like a recipe for early elimination. This player is mobile, maneuverable, and they go all in. I tip my cap to them and their brave style. Defense versus offense, they absolutely get a 10. Likeability scale, they get a six. If you're not being attacked by them, you don't care. If they're coming after you, you're not too fond of them. If you combine these play styles with the player archetypes, you can really get a good sense of who your opponents are and consequently you can then predict how they might behave. Some of these complement each other as well, such as when a vassal allies with a patron or when a fortress is located next to a blitzkrieger. The boss and the janissary are also a combination to be aware of. If you got value from this video, liking it really helps the channel out. And if you want to improve your diplomacy game, check out our other diplomacy content. Thanks so much for your time.